What's going on guys? Welcome to episode number 25 of our Cincinnati Reds franchise. In this one, I'm going to be doing a lot of simulation here to pretty much finish the offseason. We've spent about maybe four or five episodes on this so far, so it's kind of getting a little drawn out. Guys are kind of dropping off. Viewership's starting to drop off, and you know, I don't, I don't want that. So I, I want to get into the 2019 season and uh, move forward. So, little recap. Just a little one. We signed Dallas Keuchel and Kendall Graveman to be part of the pitching staff. So if I can kind of get this back in order here. Luis Castillo here. Romano down to f there. Nope, you're not going to be able to switch it. Okay. Um, Dace Clefani, number three. Okay, so there's your starting rotation for 2019. Thus far, the number five role is still up to be decided. It's because you got Garrett. Vine for that job, Harvey, Stevenson, Finnegan. We got Tyler Molly, who's in AAA right now. He is on the 40 man roster, so we could call him up. Sarah Romano is still going to try to fight for that number five role, though. So, so that's kind of the battle right now. Pretty gonna going to be pretty interesting going into spring training. So, um, what did I want to talk to you guys about in this one? We want to address some things with the roster because if you guys can look here at catcher we've got barnhart and stevenson going to be at the major league level you've got joe hudson and chris o'key down in the minor leagues so we do need another catcher i think i want to go after a guy that's not going to cost a lot of money and that's chris stewart 37 years old 66 overall type of player i mean he's he's a he's a veteran He's been very good in his career. Can give you some some solid defense. That's really what he's all about. Um, not really gonna hit a whole lot. So, you know, just just a guy down in the minor leagues, maybe Double A, Triple A type of level, backup catcher at Triple A behind Joe Hudson. Even I know he's a 66, but I think Hudson's a little bit better in the peripherals. Probably a better offensive player. So, we'll sign Chris Stewart. I know. 37 years old, <laughs> right? It's a 550. He'll be fine. And then we do need to focus in on a young catcher. So, guy like this, Mike Ullman. Look at that. Pretty good. Pretty good player. 47 contact, 54 contact. Good power numbers. All right, good contact numbers. Some so-so power numbers. So those need to be worked on a little bit. Uh, Steve Barron is another guy I was looking at, but with that B potential. A lot of teams are going after um, Ullman. Here's another interesting cat here, Jacob Nottingham. And then we've got Tyler Heineman, 86 vision, pretty solid defensively. And he's also got some pretty good numbers with hitting. Um, so if I had to pick, actually, if I had to pick who I was going to go after... It probably looks like I'm going to go after. Here we go. Here's a good one right here. Donnie Sands. C potential, 59 overall, 22 years old. 60 contact, 51 contact. Power numbers you can work with. Defense you can work with. Got to get a little bit, a little bit better there. Let's just go after this guy. Let's get him signed. He'd be a nice addition with along with Chris Stewart kind of round out that catching position first base we're pretty solid there don't need to focus on that second base is the same type of deal third base needs some work third base needs some work i was kind of looking at charlie culberson uh 72 fielding can play anywhere you want him to i mean he can play first second short obviously plays third can play the outfield because that's where he's playing in in real life from time to time i believe um, I know when uh, Acuna went down, that's where he was playing, was he was splitting time with Preston Tucker in left field. Uh, so I know he can play there. 51, 74, 45, 64, it's pretty solid. Eduardo Escobar would be a nice little fit too. But, you know, I'm trying to look at things that make sense, right? Charlie Culberson, be kind of guy, be able to step in, play against left-handers, so that Jesse Winker would not have to face them. And that's really what I'm looking for, guys. I'm looking for a, a left-handed 
um, specialist, a guy that's going to be able to hit left-handers uh, very, very well. Escobar, being a switch hitter, he's going to be doing both things very well. Uh, Matt Dominguez, is a, a right-handed hitter, pretty, pretty solid hitter. Always, has always been one to have some power, but look at that. Chris Johnson could be our left, our left-handed specialist, but you know he can only play third and first, so it's not really what I'm looking for. Um, looking for a kind of a utility guy that can do a little bit of everything. Nico Goodrum would be a nice pick, but he doesn't hit lefties as well as what I'm looking for. And that pretty much rounds out third base. You could look at second base. Some guys that can play some outfield like Alan Hansen, but doesn't do enough as far as contact goes with lefties. Uh, Gia Vitello was talked about. He might be a good fit. Um, especially against those left-handers with the 66 contact, but no power. So that's kind of where I'm not looking at him anymore. Uh, Diego Palmero. I'm actually going to give offer this guy a contract just because he's 28 years old and you know 77 contact numbers, pretty good speed. Yeah, he would he would be pretty solid. I know that you know we don't really need another second baseman, but you know, he's 66 overall, so he's going to kind of push Shed Long or Blandino a little bit, maybe even Tobin, uh, to try to stretch that out a little bit. Johnny Vincent, look at this guy. He was just, he, he was either undrafted or he was drafted and just let go. I don't, I don't really know what happened there, but those contact numbers are really good uh, themselves. But the potential is a D, so I'm not, I'm not looking at that too much. So that's what you're looking at, guys. I, I kind of like the idea of trying to sign Charlie Culberson. Unless we really want to go after... Let's see. Who was it? Who was it? Not Castillo. I, I know. Ruzan Castillo would be huge. He's not even asking for a lot of money. 550k per year. That would be pretty big time for us. But, you know, we, we, don't, we don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need it. Because we got Taylor Trammell. Right? Coming out in left field. He's probably going to be a center fielder once Billy Hamilton's gone. Thomas Moore. Maybe he outpaces Taylor Trammell one day. Tyler Goodell's only going to get better too. So, I mean, we're, we're fine. We're fine in the outfield. We don't need to really address that. Uh, I was looking for Kike Hernandez. There he is. So, guys, look at his power numbers there. 72 contacts, 73 power. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good, right? <laughs> but when you compare him to Charlie Culberson, I think I'd rather have Charlie Culberson. And not because the overall is better, because he's a 69. Uh, but I think Culberson can do a little bit more for us. I know that Kike can play everywhere. But, you know, the contact, the contact, 35 and 43, right? Not good. Not good. 51 and 45. Heck of a lot better. Culberson kind of struggles more defensively than Kike Hernandez, but I think Culberson would be a great, great addition for us. So let's let's try to sign him for two years. Uh, keep it at 500. See if he takes it. Uh, so let's just take a look again. Sorry, I don't mean to back out. Uh, is our pending offers here? So we're trying to address catcher, backup catcher, minor league catcher. Second base, I just like this guy's potential. I think that he can do some things for us, especially with those contact numbers. And then Charlie Culberson. So let's go ahead and simulate. I know that's kind of a long-winded explanation, but let's just keep on going. See if anybody signs. So we got two guys, three guys. Let's go to our transactions and see what, what happened. Okay, so we got Diego Palmero, Donnie Sands, and we placed Forest Wall on waivers, and he got assigned to double-A. So he did not get picked up, and that kind of frees up a spot for us on the 40-man. So if you guys look here, we do have 38, 38 people on the 40-man roster. And if you guys look here, this is the Rule 5 draft on the 13th. I don't want to have two Rule 5 guys on this team. I really, really don't because Rule 5 means you have to keep them on the roster for the entirety of the Major League season. And honestly, I think we could use the talent that's in there because there's always talent in the Rule 5 draft. I just don't I don't like the idea of 
having two Rule 5 guys on the team, right? I just, I just don't. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put somebody back up on the 40-man roster. It's probably going to be the next best player. And it looks like Shed Long can be on the 40-man. Thomas Moore could be on the 40-man. There's Diego Palmero. Uh, Dean Kikifer. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do it, guys. I think I'm gonna put Kikifer on the 40 man just because he does give us that that option to um, get called up if need be. And only major league free agents may be added to the 40 man. To November. Okay. Okay. So the 40 man rosters are pretty much locked, right? So I guess we have to. I guess we have to pick. Two rule fives. Maybe you can simulate it and not pick a, another rule five. I don't. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to see what happens. But I am interested in getting involved in that rule five. So let's simulate here again and see. So we do have 39 now. We did have 38 on the 40 man. So I wonder who signed. What happened here? Okay, so we signed Chris Stewart. So that means Culberson is still on the fence. And Chris Stewart, we don't want him to the major league level. Um, don't want that. Or, I mean, you know, hey, maybe. I'm going back and forth, guys. Maybe we do want Chris Stewart as our backup catcher, honestly. And maybe get Tyler Stevenson some more marination down there at the AAA level. He's still only 22 years old. You know, maybe just wait and see how he does. He's still only one overall point behind Chris Stewart. Chris Stewart's kind of a stopgap type of guy. So we'll just see what happens. But let's go ahead and go. So actually, let's go ahead now and go to the Rule 5 draft. There probably is going to be a lot of talent here. So let's see what's what we got here. Andrew Tolls goes number one. He's a 77 overall. That's going to be big big for the White Sox. Shelby Miller, Coda Glover, Andrew Moore. I mean, this is crazy. Look at these names on here. <laughs> what? Helixson, I, you could have a whole entire pitching staff of this. What's what are the other positions? Like, uh, Randall Delgado, Gil Martin, the lefty. Gil Martin's actually not that bad in real life. Jose Leclerc, Jose Leclerc might be pretty good for the Reds. Wow, that, that might be actually our pick here. Um, let's see. Oh, well, looks like we addressed catcher a little too soon. I don't want. I don't want to do this. I don't want to pick Christian Bethencourt because basically what that does is that stunts Tyler Stevenson. I don't want that to happen. Um, Tyler White. We don't need a first baseman, even though that's kind of intriguing, because Tyler White's actually a pretty good hitter. For the Astro. D <laughs> Dustin Pedroia is a Rule 5 option? I Guys, some of these things, that, some of these moves I can't even do. Ryan Schimpf, 98 power. Look at that. But the contact's terrible. I can't even make some of these moves I want to, guys, because I'm trying to keep this thing real, you know? Um, let's see. Oh. Wow. Wow, this is interesting. So Yasmani Tomas in real life, it was sent down by the Diamondbacks. What's cool is that I could actually see this type of thing happening. Yasmani Tomas coming over here to the Cincinnati Reds as a Rule 5 pick. He's pretty much struggled. He had a not-so-good season in 2015, his rookie season. And everybody was like, oh, my God, Yasmani Tomas, he's going to be a big power hitter, and he hit nine home runs. And then the next season, he had 31, so he really stepped it up. The following year, didn't do a whole lot, right? Only 47 games, the batting average started to dip. And then in 2018 came around, and he's not even on the big league roster. So I can see why this would make some sense here and if you guys look at this he's, he can play third he can play left center right i mean yasmani tamas can can do it all for us the fielding's pretty dang good he is a right-handed hitter 
We don't. We might not even really even need Charlie Culberson to be signed, right? We could just draft Yasmani Tomas right here with our only Rule 5 draft pick, split some time here with Jesse Winker. You know, you get Tomas against lefties, righties he sits, Winker plays against the righties. Because if you guys look, his numbers aren't really that much different against right-handers as Tomas is, but obviously Tomas plays a little bit, I, I wouldn't even say a little bit better defense. I think Winker's probably better defensively. Uh, he just has a huge arm out there in left field. It kind of it would be kind of cool to bring Yasmani Tomas in because I think that that would make heck of a lot of sense. Um, Ramil Tap Tapia would be a nice pick there. Zach Granite as well. Nice speed, good defense. Man, there's a lot of good talent here, guys. I'm not sure what we should do. Pitching, we could address pitching some more. Although I, I really don't want to do this. I really don't want to pick any of these guys that are up here like like major league ready type of guys. It just doesn't make sense. But at the same time, if I'm doing that, I'm basically throwing us under the bus. But I didn't really even need to. Uh, Anthony Banda for the Rays. I don't think that they'd ever let him go, though. I don't, I don't think that a lot of these teams would let guys go like this. Jarrell Cotton. It's actually pretty funny because I was thinking about going after Jarrell Cotton at the trade deadline, and I didn't pull the trigger. But this is kind of funny. The Tigers don't even want to give him a shot anymore. Um, I'm just pressing recommend player, and it's going to Jeremy Hellickson. So... I don't know. I, I really don't want to do that because, it, it, like I said, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Lucas Sims might be a, a good pick here for us. Um, but, I mean, we've already got a lot of young pitching guys. And there's nothing wrong with adding more to it. Jack Flaherty's in there. I mean, Jack Flaherty's in there. He's in, the, he's in the major leagues right now for the – come on. You know, it's just it's just goofy. It's crazy. I could go after some guys down here like Raul Alcantara. There's Kerry Mela. Um, he was not on our 40-man roster, so yeah. Oh, and that's that's what that's something, guys. I should have mentioned that these are not players that teams are letting go. It's just they they're not on their 40-man roster. They're subject to getting picked. If they're not picked, they're gonna be headed back. Yeah, I don't know. I think that Jose Leclerc would be a good pick here. Kind of help out our bullpen. But then again, like I had mentioned before, whoever doesn't win that number five job is going to get pushed to the bullpen. So whether that be Finnegan, Garrett, Stevenson, they're going to get pushed to the bullpen. Or they might even be a minor league starting pitcher, right? I think that if we decided to go with Yasmani Tomas, they're so they're so similar against righties that in they're so similar against righties and that in that lefties Tomas is so much better that you would end up playing Tomas every single day, right? And Winker is not gonna play enough. That's really all it comes down to. So although I think it would help our offense against those left-handed pitchers, I'm gonna have to pass on Yasmani Tomas. As much as I want to address the offense, I don't think I can actually go ahead and do it. Um, I do think that the bullpen is an issue. We do have a lot of young pitchers. Granted, there's a ton of young pitching in here to pick from. I mean, a guy like Lucas Sims, that would be huge for us. But I think if we're in win-now mode, and I say that lightly, and then once you start getting in here down to the 58s and the 60s, I'm not too interested in that. Um, but yeah, a guy like Eric Eric Fetty, Fetty or Fede for the Nationals, just there's no there's no rhyme or reason why they wouldn't protect him. Jack Flaherty, I don't know why they wouldn't protect him. Lucas Sims, maybe I don't I can't even see why they wouldn't protect him either. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of young pitching down here. It makes sense for us to go after that, but we, we already have a lot of young guys. Like I said, you know, Hunter Green's in the wings, uh, Gutierrez, Chris Rodriguez. 
So it doesn't really help us this season. So for me, it's probably going to be have to be either Randall Delgado or Jose Leclerc. And I think what I'm gonna I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go after Jose Leclerc. And I think that that helps out our bullpen big time. 78 overall, 99 hits against, 96 Ks against, home runs. He does the walks per nine though. That is terrible. Eight. So he has literally no control. The velocity is there. The hits and the, the K per nine is there, but the walks is just not. Delgado's more of a well-rounded. He's more of a professional. He's a pro. Leclerc, we have to work on him like really, really hard. But, you know, I mean, that's a nice guy to have in the back of your bullpen for sure to be a setup guy. I think we're going to take Jose Leclerc. Yep, still nothing, guys. So, I mean, we're at December 30th now. Um, I think there's going to be guys. I really want Culberson, though, but I think there's going to be guys available. Uh, so let's just keep hanging tight. I'm not going to offer him any more money than what we've already offered. Okay, so we got 41 players on our 40-man roster. I think that that means he signed. And if we look here, he did. He did sign. So we're going to have to move somebody down from the Major League uh, roster here. Actually off the 40-man. And I think that that's going to have to be Jose Garcia. Don't want to, but I think that we have to. It's our only move that we can make. I don't think anybody's going to pick him up, though. Um, okay, then we got to move... Somebody off the Major League roster. <clears throat> Which would probably be Aquino. Okay, so we're at 25 of 25. We need two more players into Triple A and one more player in Double A. So I think right now that's a pretty good roster thus far. Barnhart, Stewart. Votto, Joseph, Jeanette, Suarez, Culberson, Sinzel, Peraza, Winker, Hamilton, and Shebler. So, yeah, I mean, we don't we don't need another outfielder, right? Peraza can play outfield. Culberson can play outfield if we absolutely have to. So, I think we're fine. I think we're fine here. Yeah, I mean, and you guys were right. You guys were right. So there's a lot of players here, guys that are ages 35, 36, that nobody really wants to take a chance on again. Um, pretty good. Pretty good to pick from. We also got Wilmer Defoe down here. I guess we're talking about signing Wilmer Defoe. He might not be too bad for us, 26 years old. He'd make some sense. If you guys look here, check this guy out. 70 contact, 72, really fast, Alfonso Anaya. Playing center field, 65 overall right now. C potential, he's not too bad. Might want to give him a give him a look. Just, just even for some just minor league depth right now, you know? And just to throw you guys a bone, let's go after Wilmer Defoe too. Let's sign Defoe. Give him a four-year contract. Boom. I think I, I think I like that. It's it's nothing too crazy. If and now we're finally here, guys. Spring training is here. It's officially begun. I will end up giving you guys a look at the roster. The final one. But I'm gonna go ahead and sign some more free agents and get this roster completed. So we'll just take one more look. I'm probably looking at, let's see, catchers I think's okay. I think we still need some more third baseman, and that's pretty much it, in my opinion. So let's uh, let's look at some third baseman here and just try to get some guys signed. Um, Middlebrooks would be fine. Josh Van, J Van Metter would be fine. Mitch Nay, those were two of our guys actually in our in our system. Um, let's just sign Mitch Nay one more time. Okay, cool. Let's shoot.
shoot them down. G4 overall. You're probably a double A type of player, I'm assuming. Mitch Ney, you're probably a single. Okay. And let's go with. Let's, let's go with Trevor Ploof. Let's go with Trevor Ploof. Actually, let's wait on that because I think there's some guys here that can play third base as well. Eric Sogard. <laughs> He'd be perfect. Steve Lombardozzi. I like I like Lombardozzi. Let's give Lombardozzi a, a contract. Let's sign this guy. Okay. Salary's too low. Okay, perfect. So here's Steve Lombardozzi. Ended up signing. Good, good, good. We'll just know that he's a third baseman for us at, at the AAA level. So not too concerned that he's listed as a second baseman right now. So it looks like Defoe did sign. He's our backup shortstop right now. Even though I know Senzel is the guy. So don't freak out on me, guys. Don't freak out. Senzel is the guy that's going to be splitting some time. Whoops. That's going to be splitting some time between Suarez, Jeanette, and Peraza. So Senzel is going to be doing everything. He's going to be playing second, third, and short. I'm not about to stunt Nick Senzel's growth whatsoever. Defoe is probably going to be a guy at the AAA level for shortstop to start and then we'll see what what he's got going on um, and then eventually if we do need to make some moves if Jeanette gets hurt or something of that nature then we'll have to move Peraza over to second we'll we'll start Sinzel at short Defoe will be the backup you know we'll we'll make it work but Defoe is a good player to have because he's just he's just he's good he's he's solid he's solid so even if it doesn't pan out with Jeanette. Maybe we have to trade him. Maybe we trade him away. Or we gotta blow the whole entire thing up. Right? Then Defoe would end up probably being our shortstop. Maybe our second baseman, actually, because you can see his arm there is a 43. Actually, Peraz is a better fielder than Defoe is. So Defoe would probably play second. Peraz would play center field, maybe, if we had to move Hamilton. And Nick Senzel would be our shortstop or Suarez gets traded and Sinzel becomes our third baseman so I kind of like where this is going I really really do I mean think about what we have the potential of a Reds like full-on rebuilded team look at what that looks like you know you get Paven Smith Defoe or Shed Long you know Shed Long could be our starter uh, but I'm thinking it's probably gonna be Defoe or Peraza then you got Sinzel and then you got possibly Kevin Maiton, right? 71 overall uh, with arms, 65 overall right now. So he's definitely got some room to grow. Uh, Winker, Trammell, and who knows? Who knows who's going to be in right field? Could be anybody. Could be this guy. I don't know. Could be Jose Siri. <laughs> so I think I like what I'm I'm looking at here, guys, for the future. Uh, it could be Thomas Moore in left, Winker in right. Yeah. Tremel in center. Yeah, it's not too shabby. It's not too shabby at all. But as I said, we're not looking to just lay low. You know, we're looking to take it to the next level and win this shiz. But look at this, guys. Look at the bump in the overall. Right? He's in the rotation. Contract is good. Coaching is top tier. I mean, everybody's pumped, guys. The, the Reds are making a big step forward. Keuchel's a 92. He was an 88 last offseason. Castillo's an 89 now. McCleric's an 80. Lorenzen's a 77. Like, everybody's pumped up, guys. Votto's a 91. Yeah, this is big. Scooter Jeanette, 84. This, this Reds team is looking to do some damage. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did. And if you have any other suggestions as far as free agency goes, Put them in the comment section below, and let's talk about it. Let's hash it out. What did you think about the offseason? What did you think about the moves that we made? Are you excited about this Reds team going forward into 2019? I think you are. I know that I am. 
let's go back to spring training against Corey Kluber, just like last season, and let's see what everybody's got in episode number 26. So like I said, guys, leave a like if you like this thing, and if you're new to the channel and you like it and you love it and you want more of it, got to hit that red subscribe button or my logo, and I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, peace.